Oh, this housing market, it's getting tiring. The swings of good news and bad news. Let's break the heartbreaks down in this market report for the week of February 27th. Real quick, what to expect? We're going to start with seeing what happened in the condo as well as the single family market in the state of Massachusetts. Then we're going to jump into interest rates. And when you're talking about interest rates, well, that's going to bring you into some of the big happenings in our economy right now. Plus, the luxury segment as we're going to head down to Barnesville, take a look at a $30 million state. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. I'm one of the state's top agents. If you have any questions about the real estate market, then no, I'm here for you. Let's start with the single family market. Inventory, it continues to drop. There are currently 2,737 units that are on the market. Now, this is nearly a hundred unit drop from last week's inventory number, but the amount of additional inventory that a buyer actually has to look at compared to the same week last year is up slightly to 835 units. How could this happen? It's because last week, last year, also had a big inventory drop. They saw levels drop by 109 units versus the 104 units that we saw this year. The continued takeaway is that inventory is tight and it's getting tighter. It will most likely continue to be this way until mid-March, maybe end of March. We had 563 new listings come on the market this week. This is right in line with the four-week average of 567 units, but the 172 units, or 23.4%, behind the amount of single families that came on the market same week last year. We had 666 properties go under agreement. It was one heck of a devilish week. Sorry, just couldn't help myself. But compared to last year, this was a decrease of 195 units or 22.65%. So the amount of new listings went down by 23.4% while the amount of houses going under agreement went down by 22.7%. Basically, the market conditions last week were the same as the market conditions the week, the year beforehand. However, the overall numbers, they were just smaller. There were 435 homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $667,000 and a median sales price of $500,000. Months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in with zero to five months being considered a seller's market. And the closer to zero that you get, the stronger the seller's market it is. This week, months of inventory ticked up slightly to 1.23 months compared to last week's 1.17 months. This continues to indicate that it is a strong market for sellers. Let's beat the dead horse real quick. First seller's advantage. There are some major headwinds in the marketplace right now, which we are going to talk about in just momentarily. But sellers who are contemplating selling this spring might want to consider coming to the market earlier, like now. If this is you, then reach out to me. Let's talk about your specific situation and see if it makes sense. It could be the difference of thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars armed to the condo market. We have 1,704 condos that are currently on the market as of money. Inventory moved down by another 13 units. Crazy. We've actually now seen six weeks of consecutive inventory declines in the condo market, but the 28 day change in inventory is only 1.9% less. Inventory is trending down, but very slowly. The amount of additional inventory compared to last year actually increased to 263 units from last week's 243 units. There are 340 newly listed condos that came on the market this week. Nothing abnormal here is the four week rolling average has been 336 units. And this can be compared to the 430 units that came on this week last year for a 20.9% decrease. Now we had 356 condos go under agreement this week. This is compared to the last four week rolling average of 348. So we're right on point there. One year ago, we sold 466 condos which means we were about 23.6% behind last year's pace. There are 211 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $520,000 and that median sales price of $416,000. Months of inventory moved up to 1.85 months from last week's 1.72 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods and subscribing that doesn't hurt either. On to the mortgage market. It was a rough week for interest rates. We've seen some leveling off, and as of the beginning of this week, we're seeing some interest rates dip slightly, so that's a good thing. We're in the mid to the high 6% range, with borrowers with lower credit scores might even be seeing something with a 7% number on it. Why is this happening? It's all tied around inflation. Those high inflation numbers have convinced traders that the interest rate cuts are not coming anytime soon. So therefore, the yield curves are adjusting, and this is the result of that new reality. Check this out. Expectations for the terminal rate has spiked to 5.39% and the second half of 2023 rate cut expectations have dwindled to single digits. But here's another problem. It might actually be the problem. The real rate, it remains negative. What does that mean? Essentially take the current rate and subtract the inflation percentage from it. 
I've been saying that real estate owners have been enjoying a great party for the last couple of years. Not only for the increasing in housing prices, but also the negative carry rates. Let's take me as an example. I'm currently locked in and paying 2.75% on my monthly mortgage, but inflation topped out at 9%. The negative carry on that was six and a quarter percent. I paid 2.75% in interest while my dollar decreased in value by 9%. In a back world crazy way, I actually made 6.25% on my money. That is the Fed's problem. They're gonna keep increasing interest rates until the Fed rate is over that inflation rate. The goal here was that by increasing the interest rates, then the inflation rate would actually come down and therefore the rates wouldn't need to go up that high. By the way, did you see this bad news? Pending home sales improved for a second straight month up 8.1% in January. Okay, so that really wasn't bad news for the real estate market. And when you dig into those numbers, the amount of units were up, but with pricing coming down by about 5%. I'll also note that the market bears that believe that builders will create a glut of supply, which will cause massive price drops. Well, there was another piece of data in there that didn't look too good for you if that was your camp that you're posting your flag in. And that was that the months of inventory decreased from 8.7 months in December to 7.9 months in January. Builders, they're cleaning out their unsold inventory without having to offer enormous price cuts. Meanwhile, they're limiting new inventory that will come on the market over the next couple of years. And that spells more supply issues in the years to come. But that doesn't really affect us here in Massachusetts. Our new build market, it's not large, like it is in other states as well as other regions. An interesting thing to note is that consumer confidence unexpectedly fell. That could be a bad thing for our economy, but a really great thing for the inflation fight. I'll say it again, this market, it's fragile. It's like a yo-yo, good news, then bad news, then good news. Stop trying to time the market. People who waited thinking they were going to time the market in the last year, well, they've lost tens of thousands of dollars in buying power. For some, that number could well be in the six figure range. And now to the luxury home of the week. This home is in Barnstable and spans 15,500 square feet with seven bedrooms and nine full and five half baths. It's also got five fireplaces. Nestled on 3.66 acres with 280 feet of private sandy beach coastline with commanding views of Nantucket Sound. Virtually every room has ocean views and direct access to the outdoors. The house layout is perfect. It actually divides the main house from the attached guest house. Not sure what the house is for, quite frankly, because in the summer it's all about the outdoor living with a resort style swimming pool, outdoor kitchen, and large terrace. Additional amenities include a 5,000 bottle wine cellar, a golf simulator, gym, massage room, seven car garage, and a separate staff house. The house, it's being marketed for $30 million. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Then all of my information is in the description below. You can also visit me at youtuberealestateagent.com. Fill out your information, answer just a couple questions, and then I'm going to reach out to you. Whatever is easiest for you. I love to talk about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I'd love to chat with you and find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. Questions or comments about the current market data or anything in this video, then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to answer your questions. And as I always say, an informed person, they're a powerful person. So until next time.